everyone. It's Jamie Batts, your instructor for AMP2. We are continuing on with the digestive system lecture here. And we just finished talking about all of the kind of microscopic anatomy of the smooth muscle and the different layers of our digestive tract. Now we're going to go through organ by organ and summarize and go into detail exactly what these organs do. So as always, I strongly suggest chunking your video watching so that you're not just binge watching these videos on one particular day. Spread them out, take your time watching each individual video, answering the questions as I suggest, doing what I suggest um, when I tell you to draw or trace or create a, a graphic organizer. Those are the things that we would be doing as a class if this were a typical face-to-face -face course. So I try my best to give you that same experience in an online setting so the benefit is you can choose to do these lectures, you know, at 11 o'clock at night or five in the morning or listen online however um, you can. So um, please, you know, take advantage of that and do that um, as, as best you can, try to balance that. So we're going to, like I said, squeeze through all of these um, organs. So again, the digestive tract from end to end is about 33 feet long, which sounds kind of crazy, right? Um, it's divided into regions, just like our respiratory tract was upper and lower. Here we have regions as well. Yes, honey? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I just made you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Daddy's going to be home soon and we can eat dinner. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry. So um, each of the regions has different properties as well as different histology. Just like our upper and lower respiratory, we're going to see different um, kind of landmarks throughout this um, digestive system. So we'll start at the top, right? Oral cavity, mouth. This is the site of mechanical processing, chewing, right? This is done with the teeth and the tongue and the cheeks, right? The inside of the cheeks. This is moistening, lubricating, mixing the food with the salivary secretions so that chemical digestion can begin to occur. So it's mechanical and chemical digestion that's occurring in the oral cavity. Then the food passes down the pharynx. This is muscular propulsion, right? This is that swallowing action, pushing that food as you swallow. And we'll look at this. Your tongue is elevated and pushes that food back. That's the voluntary process. And then once it gets back there, the involuntary process takes over. In the esophagus, we're transferring the materials to the stomach, through the stomach. Then we continue the chemical and mechanical breakdown. The stomach is literally mixing and churning the food up, as well as some of the enzymes and acids that the stomach secretes, mixing with this food that has been chewed up. The small intestine is the major site for enzymatic digestion and absorption, the absorption of these nutrients. So the nutrients get broken down into their itty bitty teeny weeny parts, and then the small intestine absorbs them. The large intestine is where all of that food that has been denutrified by our small intestine is now dehydrated. All the water is now reabsorbed back from our this this ball of food, right? And um, the feces begins to compact. So here you see again the same image of the digestive tract organs as well as the accessories. So overall we have ingestion occurring in the digestive tract. This is putting stuff into our digestive tract. The mechanical processing, which is the crushing and the shredding. This is chewing and mixing and churning in the stomach. And then the chemical digestion itself, which is where the actual enzymes that are within your saliva or secreted from your pancreas and small intestine, those enzymes are mixing with the nutrients to further chemically alter your food. We also have secretion. Secretion is releasing water or acids or enzymes or salts even or buffers into the lumen of the digestive tract or um, maybe these are being secreted by our accessory organs or the actual organs themselves and mixing with our food. Absorption is when those mo molecules that are in our food are now being taken into the, um, the interstitial fluid and eventually end up in our bloodstream. So they go in through those cells of the, you know, the epithelial cells of our intestines and they go through that submucosal lining where all of our blood vessels are and they can get transported in our blood or lymphatics. Um, the fat is 
typically uh, transported in the lymphatics. And then finally, compaction. Compaction is dehydrating that the indigestible materials and preparing the feces for removal. So major functions, ingestion, mechanical, um, processing, right? Digestion, secretion, absorption, compaction, and defecation. This does not have, um, oh, I guess chemical digestion is what digestion refers to. There are three questions here. You can pause the video, go back and review this little section. We're going to start with the oral cavity in the mouth, lined by oral mucosa, which is stratified squamous. We reviewed that already. It's keratinized in areas that are exposed to lots of friction, like the top of our tongue and the hard palate, the roof of our mouth have lots and lots of thick layers of cells. Thin, non-keratinized are on the inner linings of our cheeks, that bottom of the tongue, um, those softer parts of our mouth have a, a non-keratinized epithelium. And that non-keratinization just means that they're a little softer. When the cells are keratinized, think about the, the tough, um, our tough outer skin, right? Those are keratinized cells. They're, they're thick, they're um, many, many layers thick, and they're very dried out, right? And they just kind of flake off. Well, the, the non-keratinized are much softer. So the thin mucosa that's underneath the tongue allows for rapid absorption of some of the lipid-soluble drugs like nitroglycerin, uh, which just put that um, underneath your tongue, right? Nutrients are not absorbed in the oral cavity, um, typically, other than some lipid-soluble uh, chemicals, like in that instance of um, nitroglycerin. Um, and the digestion of carbohydrates and lipids begins in the oral cavity because of some of the enzymes that are actually in our saliva. So you have the hard and soft palate, which are the upper boundaries or superior boundaries. You have your cheeks and the labia or your lips, which are the side and front boundaries. And um, the posterior boundary is the uvula, that little, the hanging ball thing, right? Dangling process. This helps prevent food from going up into the nasal cavity. Um, it actually swings forward during swallowing so that the food does not go into that nasopharynx area and gets pushed down. And there's palatine tonsils back there um, on either side of that oropharynx area. The root of the tongue is also towards the back. It's fixed um, within that oropharynx area and the lingual tonsils are located at the root of the tongue back there. The body of the tongue and consists of this the front movement portion, right? That's the part where you say stick out your tongue, uh, right? That's what you see. There's a um, couple muscles in there providing extra support. You don't have to be familiar with those muscles. So that's just showing you some of the major landmarks. You can see the tonsils, palatine and lingual tonsils in this image. So let's talk about some of the structures. I'm going to um, quick quickly go through some of the anatomy because we cover it pretty in depth in lab. You're, you have a chance to look at the models and get more familiar. So the vestibule is the space between our lips and the teeth, kind of this, I don't like to touch the inside of my mouth, but this uh, inside part between your cheeks and teeth. The frenulum attaches your upper and lower lips to your gums. So you have one on the top and one on the bottom, which is this little piece of skin. Um, there's also thick mucosal ridges on that hard palate for traction and compression of food during chewing. And then the gingivae are your gums, which are firmly attached to the periostea of the underlying bones, the mandible and maxilla. You have pharyngeal arches, which are located on either side of the uvula, and then something called the fauces. The fauces are the connection between the oral cavity and the oral pharynx. So, um, they're just, uh, it's just kind of like a little hallway connection um, between the back of the uh, back of the mouth and, and the back of the throat. And then, and then the salivary glands, which are not within the oral cavity, secrete the saliva into the oral cavity. The tongue itself manipulating um, the materials in the mouth and um, getting flushed by all the secretions of our glands. Like um, the secretion um, that's associated with our lingual um, sublingual salivary glands are lipid lipase or lingual lipase rather, uh, which contains um, enzymes which begin the, the chemical breakdown of lipids in our mouth. There's also mucins, which is kind of a mucousy um, type of secretion, and of course water. So there you see, you can see where those um, uh, salivary gland glands secrete just on either side of the frenulum. 
the lingual frenulum. You can pause the video here, go back and review this section. We're going to move on and talk about the teeth. There's a crown, a neck, and a root. The crown's what you see. The neck is the boundary between the crown and the root, and the root is below the gum line. It sits in a bony socket called an alveolus. So the tooth is made of dentin. Dentin is the um, majority of what you, you can see. It's covered in enamel um, on our teeth, and there's the pulp cavity, which is the area that's inside of the teeth. This is where the living cells are. The occlusal surface is the actual grinding surface of our teeth. This is where the slicing or grinding, this is kind of if you ran your hand like that across the bottom of your teeth or the top of your bottom teeth, you would feel that occlusal surface where they occlude or meet, unless you have an overbite like me. And then they don't. Either way, the enamel is actually covering the dentin. Like I said, it's the hardest biologically manufactured substance on earth. Um, it's actually made of calcium phosphate. So it requires calcium phosphate and vitamin D for it to be maintained, and um, it's very resistant to disease and decay, um, but we know over time, sometimes the enamel breaks down and we get cavities, right? The gingival sulcus is a groove around the base of the neck, and the epithelial attachment blocks bacteria from accessing the deeper tissues in the root. There's something called cementum, which covers the dentin in the root. It's, very, uh, it's much less resistant to erosion than dentin, which is why our gums are there to protect that area. The periodontal ligament creates this joint we call a gomphosis, which is the joint between the tooth itself and that alveolar bone, that um, the alveolar cavity where these teeth, the tooth sockets, so to speak, where they are. And then a root canal, there is actually a thing called a root canal. It's not just a procedure. The root canal is a tunnel within each root of the tooth. It's a passageway for blood vessels and nerves to get into that pulp cavity. And the opening is called the apical foramen. So all your teeth have a little hole. There you see the pulp cavity on the inner lining, the dentin, which is, the, is you know, surrounding our entire tooth. The surface of our crown is covered by enamel. The neck is just that little boundary between the crown and the root. And then the root goes into that socket held in place by that periodontal ligament, which you can see a little bit of in this image. And um, the root canal itself, the apical foramen, the cementum covering that root structure. There are four types of teeth in the human mouth, um, and they all have distinctive shapes and root patterns, and this is because they all have different functions, right? Humans are omnivores. We are meant to eat a variety of foods, including meat and plant products. So we have both meat-eating teeth and plant-eating teeth, right? Incisors are the blade-shaped teeth with a single root. These are the front four teeth on the top and the front four teeth on the bottom. They're very useful in clipping, cutting, slicing, right? The cuspids or the canine teeth, those are the pointy teeth. We have uh, one on each quadrant of our, our mouth. They're very conical shaped. They have a sharper ridge line. This is for tearing and slashing, right? They just have a single root as well. Then we have bicuspids or premolars. These have a more flattened crown with ridges. They have one or two roots, and then the molars towards the back are very flattened, um, have very prominent ridges, much better for crunching and grinding, typically have three roots. Um, there you see the actual shapes of the teeth, as well as what we call our, our um, dentition number, right? Um, so in, on the top, and this is uh, broken apart by quadrant. So you have your upper right, your upper left, your lower right, and your lower left. Um, so on any given quadrant, you have two incisors, one cuspid, two bicuspids, and three molars, right? Well, that third set of molars that are the wisdom teeth, most of us have those removed or they, they don't uh, pop up. Most of us actually don't have a full set. So let's talk about um, how these teeth form and kind of, you know, their general layout. First of all, the teeth that you have now are not your original set of teeth, right? Uh, you have your primary dentition or your deciduous teeth or milk teeth as they're sometimes called, primary teeth, baby teeth, right? Uh, generally around two, eight, two years of age, your uh, children will have a full set of these baby teeth, 20 in total, five on each side of the upper and lower jaw, so 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, two incisors, one cuspid, two deciduous molars. So those will all eventually all fall out, be replaced by our, there they are, 
Um, but with the relative times that they emerge, you don't have to know that, though. So, um, this is actually pretty cool, although it is kind of sad how these came about. Um, the deciduous teeth um, on this child's skull, and then you can actually see the erupting um, adult teeth kind of coming out. Um, then those primary teeth or baby teeth are, of course, replaced by our secondary dentition or permanent teeth, as we call them. And the um, primary teeth, basically that periodontal root just loosens over time, and um, the roots of those primary teeth will erode because the ligaments aren't holding them in place. So, you know, it, the blood vessels basically die in those and new blood vessels form in those new erupting teeth. So the primary teeth will fall out or they're pushed to the side by the secondary teeth. Three additional molars will appear on each side of the upper and lower jaws. That third is called that third set is called the wisdom teeth. So typically we have 32 total permanent teeth. There they all are. And again those wisdom teeth coming in much later in life um, are usually removed, um, or some people only have one, you know, that ever erupts. I had all four of mine removed when I was in 11th grade. Uh, a lot of pain. Anyways, um, there are diseases associated with our teeth and gums, gingivitis for one. This is the inflammation of the gums themselves. This results um, from a weakened um, attachment of our gums to our teeth, maybe from brushing too harshly, um, etc. So um, being soft or even massaging your gums can help to um, regrow those epithelial attachments. If it's severe, it can lead to bacterial infections. Bacteria, which aren't meant to get down into those little sockets, can crawl in there, cause um, root damage, tooth loss. Not very pretty. Tooth decay generally results from action of bacteria. This is normally found in any normal mouth, right? And typically we develop these plaques and when we go to the dentist every six months, they take those little scrapers and they scrape all that plaque off of our teeth to help keep our teeth nice and healthy. So you can, actually I think I will stop the video here so that you have a chance to chew on that and get it. All right, have an awesome day.